What's going on guys? Um, we have Dee and Kimberly here to demonstrate some vital signs. We're going to quickly run through a full set of vital signs from blood pressure, um, heart rate, respiratory rate, pulse ox, pupils, lung sounds real quick. And then we're actually going to dive into each specific skill later on in the video. Um, so Dee, why don't you, you know, in this process is after we've established that the patient's airway, breathing, and circulation is unremarkable, they're adequate, um, and we're in the secondary assessment, and this particularly, we're taking a set of vital signs. Um, the position that you want to have your patient in is to be in a seated upright position. We're going to ask uh, for consent and all of these things and simple acts like them giving you their arm or their finger is them expressing consent for each individual skill. So D, we're going to start with applying that pulse ox um, onto the hand and finger that's not going to be used for the blood pressure. So while that's being measured, D's going to apply the blood pressure cuff. And guys, when you're using, um, when you're taking a blood pressure, Make sure, it's going to go on top of that arm, make sure that um, the, the uh, cuff size is the right size. So right now, we have an adult size. If the Velcro doesn't properly fit, if it looks like, if it looks like it's already going to rip off, um, we're going to have to upgrade to a larger adult size. And we want to place the bottom of the cuff about an inch above where we're going to apply our stethoscope. And then the sphygmometer has a clip um, on the back side of it, and we can clip it to the patient's clothes, blouse. Um, there's a place to clip it on the blood pressure cuff. And we're going to pump up the cuff to about 200 millimeters of mercury in this case. Whatever blood pressure it takes, whatever pressure it takes to cut off circulation, we're essentially creating a tourniquet right now. Um, and when we apply the stethoscope, D's going to ensure that we're on the right side. So how do we check, D, how do we check what side that we're on um, for the bell? How do we know what side? So you can rotate the bell. Yeah. Um, and you can just simply tap uh, the side that's muffled. Right, and then if you... And if you tap this side, you'll hear it loud and clear. Okay, sounds good. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep, so once you've tested the bell, you'd apply it. Um, again, you shouldn't hear anything right now. And pay attention to how D's holding the bell onto the skin. And so we're using that two finger technique, creating a good seal all the way around the arm. And we'll go into the actual sphygmometer later in a bit. So D, what did you end up getting? I think I got 110 over 72 again. 110 over 72. So that's our first set. We got our blood pressure. Um, what's the pulse ox reading at the moment? Right now we have a 98% uh, saturation, I think is what you're... Yeah, and then a, a heart rate about 74, but we're still going to take a manual um, heart rate. And so on a, on a person that's responsive and conscious, where can we assess for that? So we're going to assess that. Um, the radial pulse, which okay. is here, yeah. radial bone. On radial the thumb pulse. side, great. Yep. Um, so we will kind of clear the gear out of the way for the blood pressure since that is finished and recorded. Yeah. Um, and also one thing we want to do is note the time. So yeah, the time is 2.14, okay. first set of vitals. And so right now we're identifying and locating for that pulse. Once you've found a strong pulse, um, D is going to start counting whenever he wants to, um, but we're going to count for about 30 seconds. And then what number did you end up getting before you multiply? Uh, I got 36. 36. So we would multiply 36 by 2 to get the number of beats in that minute. Um, if your heart rate was irregular, we're going to actually um, stay on that wrist for a whole minute, for a whole 60 seconds, mm -hmm. um, just to ensure we've counted every irregular heartbeat. And so 36 by 2, what's her heart rate? Uh, so I got 72, which yep. is two different than her pulse ox reading. So it was close, but a little bit. Great. Different. Yep. Um, and then the next thing we'll do respiratory rate. And so we want 
Kimberly, our patient, to be leaning back. If they were leaning forward, um, it'd be a little difficult to count those respirations. Another trick that we can do is while we're counting um, someone's heart rate, we can actually apply their hand um, onto their chest. And so after we count the, the pulse, we can seamlessly transition into their respiratory rate um, without them knowing. There is that caveat though, when um, if you don't use this trick that Marty has taught us, that um, the patient might become self-conscious of their, their breathing and might you know adjust it accordingly. And so this is that trick um, to keep their hand on their chest. Yep. And so I guess if we were to, to back step, we would start with the pulse and then, the so this whole time your hand is on there. Yep. And so then we would count, go ahead and count for another 30 seconds. When did we end up getting? Uh, I got 20 overall. Nice. Mm -hmm. And it was regular. Yeah, so guys, um, each chest rise and fall is counted as one breath. And so what's next is we're gonna do lung sounds and we're gonna use the back of Kimberly to assess lung sounds. We're gonna have six spots um, that we're going to use for lung sounds. And when we're taking lung sounds, we're going to measure, compare the left of one area to the right of the respective area. And so we're, we're essentially going to trace the patient's scapula. You cannot listen to lung sounds on top of bone, so we're gonna avoid the scapula. So we're gonna find the edge of the scapula, and then we're gonna go in that first spot. Awesome, if you wouldn't mind just sitting up a little bit more. Thank you so much. And then D is gonna coach the patient when he's ready. Okay, please breathe in for me, and exhale. And then he's going to go to the, the respective okay. spot on the right side. And exhale. The next spot is going to be at the bottom of the scapula. There's going to be a corner, like it looks like a wing. So we're going to palpate for that wing, go right under it, and then he's going to coach Bring again. And exhale. Uh, one more time. Awesome. Breathe in. And exhale. Awesome. And the next spot, you're going to drop it about an inch and then move to the mid axillary area. Okay. Breathe in and exhale. One more time. Awesome. And go to the other side. Breathe in and exhale. One more time. So, thank you. Cool. And then the last uh, set is going to be taking um, pupils. So we have our pen light right here, and the way it works is you kind of just click the uh, the clip into the metal piece, and then it lights up. And so before you shine a light, we're going to take a look into their eyes and ensure that they're of normal size, right? We can tell if someone's pupils are constricted straight off the bat. Maybe they're on the, under the influence of certain medications like opiates, or they're, they're very dilated. Maybe they are in, under the influence of psychedelics or uppers like cocaine. Um, and so in this case, they look normal size and they're equal. And then what do you want to coach the patient to do before you shine light? Uh, have the patient look at you directly um, and keep their focus uh, looking at you directly. Great. So Great. there's not alterations to their eyes so I can assess um, the pupil. Okay. Constriction. So please just focus on uh, my nose or my face um, and just stay there, don't follow. What do we do if it's too bright in our situation right now? So if it were too bright, which the fluorescence kind of can give us that feel, yeah. we could shield the patient's um, face sure. and their eyes yeah. and before we go in. Okay. Uh, if we were outdoors, that would be almost a necessity. Right, right. And so I'm gonna shield, just watch me. Let's pin my, here we go. Awesome. And then what should we see? So you sh shined it in her left eye. Uh, what should we see in the right eye? We should see the same constriction. Excellent, so excellent. So it should be kind of like uh, sympathetic of each Great. Other. Awesome, and that constriction and dilation is key. Uh, pupils are pearl. Yeah, so that was a full set. Good job. Thank you, Dee and Kimberly. No worries.